Madam Chair, I must say I'm overwhelmed to be a member of the panelists for this topic because even though land administration and property appraisal <coughs> is my forte, I also <coughs> face the challenges most of you face. Most of my colleagues are at the various land commissions and yet we still are bedeviled with a lot of challenges in land administration. The main problems are that the land mass of Ghana is owned 80% by our stools, families, mm. clans, and skins. Mm. And yet, it is the one dictating the pace. So you find that they always at some level of loggerheads with the land-owning groups. Also, you find that the, the attempt to manage them is, uh, uh, though is a law, they are resistant because they feel that since the land belongs to them, even though it's supposed to be in trust for their people, since the land belongs to them, they have to dictate the pace. We find that the planning authorities, that the spatial planning authorities within the municipal, metro, municipal, and district assemblies <coughs> are the Sorry. ones who, do the, who plan schemes for their various areas. Granting of land is by um, the stools. How do we get the stools to follow the schemes of uh, the spatial author planning authorities? That's a dilemma we find ourselves in because they believe if I own more, I should have more say. So there's the need for the planning authorities to dialogue with them as to how to prepare their accept and prepare the, their planned uh, schemes. That hasn't happened, and there's a need to look into it and make sure it happens. We also have situations whereby the landowners, again, because there are always disputes within the, the, the families themselves, in fighting as to who owns what, creating problems for um, innocent purchasers. Once a, a family, uh, the chief is distilled, the new chief negates everything that the old chief has done and then does something new. Poor record keeping on behalf of the stools. They don't like keeping uh, uh, records. So there have been some level of um, um, intervention by the various lands commissions through the assistance of LAP to get them to do it. But they always find their way around it. They've come out with the Kashmir land secretariats. You find that these land secretariats are poorly manned. Any attempt to get them to get the right caliber of staff, they start talking about lack of money. You try to teach them how to get the money that also becomes a problem. So there's this backwards and forwards um, situation. And then I dare say judgments which um, <clears throat> our keynote speaker has spoken about. And I traveled that, down that path with trepidation <laughs> because I can see my late father looking me in the eye and saying, what are you going to say? But, uh, you know, I, um, I think some of our judges haven't done well for us. And they are being to the problem. They don't, they don't, uh, 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 their judgments, they don't go onto the ground to see what is happening. So some judgments are given and it's not enforceable. Not enforceable because they haven't recognized bona fide purchases who were not part of the suit 
being on the ground. They've given judgment. They're asking Lands Commission, go ahead and plot. How do we do that? The other thing is that uh, the Act 2, which was a small parcel of land in Adabraka, hmm. and the person who bought one judgment, suddenly, once you are at clinical level, everybody, I mean, you, have, you, 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 you are protected. So then it became the in thing. People building, over, you know, day and night to get to lintel so that they are covered. If you can just I think round up. I will round up mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> thank you very me. much. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Madam Adoli. So, uh, um, who would speak next? All right. Hello. Yeah, come yes. on. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Kathy. My lord. Um, I have a different perspective on this matter. Um, look, we all know that we've always fought for land. <laughs> land is something that wars have been fought. Wars, all the major wars, in fact, most wars have been fought because of land. And when you move the wars to our day-to-day -day lives, you would also appreciate that we've always had to strive to own a piece of land, whether it's in the village or it's in Accra. Now, what has happened is, because of civilization, people tend, or people have been told that you are to resort to land disputes by going to court. The days of fighting, physically, are past. Mm. So we have been asked to settle all disputes, the boundary disputes, the land ownership disputes, all disputes are to be resolved in our courtrooms. But unfortunately, the reality is that law and obtaining justice, the gap is massive. The machinery to obtain justice can take you easily eight to 10 years. A good Ghana land case, and with all due respect to my government, <laughs> A good Ghana land case, which will travel from High Court to the Appeal Court to the Supreme Court, can take you eight years. Because of that, people have refused to use that medium. People now lack confidence in civilization. They lack confidence in the law. So what has happened? We have gone back to the olden days. <laughs> where now we fight for land. But this is an interesting topic, because when you say survival of the fittest, in the olden days, it was survival of the strongest. But nowadays, survival of the fittest is different. Survival of the fittest means survival of your pocket. <laughs> As my Lord said, you must be wealthy to fight land. Survival of the fittest also means survival of the healthiest. <laughs> Some of these land cases take 10 years. You will go to court 400 times. If you are not healthy physically, you might not be able to travel that journey. Survival of the fittest also means survival of the emotionally strong because people cannot go through that fight. They fight for a year or two. In the middle, they say, I'm tired. I cannot, you know. Then survival of the fittest also means survival of the socially connected. Mm -hmm. Because if your sister knows the cousin of the judge, <laughs> <laughs> you 
it need not be, with all due respect to what has happened, it need not be a yam or good boot. situation. <laughs> but if your sister knows the cousin of the child, or they go to the same church, they could whisper that, oh, my sister's case is with you. Oh, really? Oh, that case? Oh, good, good, good. So now, survival of the socially connected. So, you have to be wealthy, healthy, emotionally strong, and socially connected. And of course, there are instances too that you must, to be, that you must be physically strong because people have fought on their lands. So that is where we are. That is the problem that we have. The underlying problem is that people do not have confidence in the legal system anymore. And that is why we have resorted to fitness. So that is my five minutes. Thank you. Um, I want to put it in perspective. Perspective in the sense that um, I want to put it in global perspective because our actions are all global. I want to put it in the perspective of our animal instincts and I want to put it in the perspective of civilization. I believe everybody who claims to own land in this country has had it as a lolodial owner by just two ways. Either by peaceful settlement or by violent occupation. There's no doubt about that. Now, you would have thought that as a nation, as we develop, these instincts, as he mentioned, would pale away and give room for a nation. Unfortunately, it is the nature of man to continuously fight and strive. And that is why the issue of survival comes into play. And when you put it in global perspective, the United Kingdom would not have traveled 8,000 kilometers to fight a war in the Falklands. And China will not be fighting for the um, South China Seas as we stand. Nor would Russia be fighting for the Antarctic as we speak. Which means that the systems cannot contain the contradictions. And somehow, we haven't managed to translate those systems for everybody. Now, basically, as we all sit here, we're Ghanaians, which means that we're entitled to the land mass of Ghana and the benefits that derive from it. But do we? Which means everybody in this room belongs to either the sovereign state of Ghana, a clan, a family, or a traditional area. And therefore, everybody has some beneficial rights to some land. But it doesn't happen. Why? It does not benefit the people. And our learned judge mentioned it. Now, if it doesn't benefit me, and there are two ways for which land can benefit. As an Akura, I have benefited from a Chimoto school built on the land owned by the state. And as I sit here, I do not need to own land to progress. Because my education gives me those qualities for which I do not need to own land. There are those indigenous who have not had such benefits. And therefore, their direct survival is based on the land. Either they derive some benefit from the land by farming, or they get benefit from the land for whatever financial benefits that accrue. But it doesn't happen. Now, when you take our coastal belt and the indigenous who live in, and through the generations, the benefits are not inclusive you are bound to have contradictions. Now, even though the family land system appoints elders to administer on our behalf, it doesn't happen. Now, since by right I'm an owner to that land, then I'll find whatever means that is beneficial to me to make sure that I benefit. Unfortunately, the system is not able to take care of these contradictions. And it will continue because that's the nature of the human being. You must re recognize that migration plays a big part in when we talk about ownership. My worry is not so much about ownership as access to land. 
Because we cannot all own land. But we must all have access to land for whatever endeavor that we want to do. And the state must be able to guarantee that access. Let me just cast your mind back to the genesis of the Arab Spring, which was started in Tunisia because <coughs> a coconut seller could not have access for his basic endeavor. And I don't know how many of you have realized that in the past three months, some fishermen along our coast have been battling with the government for rights to fish. Now, that is the basic condition for which strife happens because we do not recognize the fact that we are all entitled to benefit from the land. Beyond the land, there's nothing else. And those who can't benefit directly, those indigents who have not had the benefit of empowering themselves to be able to benefit us else otherwise. So what am I talking about? Um, My gentleman, if, you, if that could be your last point, please. No problem. Thank you. I don't need to own land to be accommodated. I don't need to own land to have an enterprise. I don't need to own land to carry out any other issue that would progress me or make my progress because I have sufficient skills that I do not derive from the land. Those who don't have to directly benefit from the land. And when that land is not available, then they fight for it. And so continuously through the system, if the system cannot contain them, then they'll keep fighting. Thank you. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> If I don't have land, I don't have a business. Unfortunately, after doing this for a while, the thing that gives me um, sleepless nights is land and ownership. In my business, I'm used to buying land two times or three times, as in paying for it. <laughs> I've come to realize that there's an owner of the land on paper i.e. the owner at Lands Commission, who the government acknowledges as the owner, and there's the owner on the ground who owns the land. <laughs> it's a normal practice. You can own the land on paper, but not have access. In the case of our school farm and that and clay, we own the land on paper, but you can see what has been done there. Someone owned it in possession. True land guards, true... <coughs> all sorts. As I sit here, I have stopped fighting physically over land. Because not too long ago, I, I had a very terrible, terrible experience. Here was me on the floor with a land guard with a cutlass on me. After that incident, I asked myself, Saka, is this worth it? What were we fighting over? Two plots of land at Pabinga. He had come to beat my boys, and I also, I also came there with my friends and we thought that we could shake them off. Then he called for reinforcement. <laughs> and the way the, the way that thing was going, we had to run. <laughs> I am not good at running, so I fell. <laughs> and when I fell, this guy, it, it took the grace of God. The guy was on me with cutlass. That day I told myself that I won't fight over land again. Since I decided I won't fight over land, I went to speak to my lawyer. Lawyers will teach you how to buy land. We have to do search. We have to do, um, you have to take your own surveyor to the land. Fortunately, I did that. I wanted to buy a big piece of land. I took my surveyor. We picked the points. We took it to land. We did the search. It turns out that we're buying from the right person. So we bought four acres. We paid for it. Unfortunately, to do a land title certificate in this country, the minimum is about a year. Within a year, when I got, and it, this is even with an agent, or you have someone chasing it from table to table. After it took me a year to get the title, I was excited. I said I was going for a holiday. When I come back, I'll develop the land. Two weeks out, when I came back, the land was walled. <laughs> My land, on that the note, one who sold the land on that me, note, could you round up? The one who sold the land to me. <laughs> let, me share this, let me share this experience because 
I need to, the reason why I'm sharing these experiences, what I did is by standard what we should do. And that didn't work. I had gone, registered the land, I had built a block factory on the land, I came back, someone had walled the land. My landowner called me, oh, oh, but my name, pa, oh, well, she I said, I haven't walled anything. I went to the land, someone else was walling it. Long story short, we have to go to court. I didn't go to court because the last time I went to court, for one year, we didn't start the case. I, put, uh, I served him. I didn't serve him. Cases I joined. I served him. I didn't serve him. Cases I joined. The land was 40000 My lawyer was charging me 28000 to do the case. Now let me go and buy another land. In a nutshell, in this, in this recent matter, it turns out that the guy was sold the land in 2012. He has an indenture for it, which he didn't go to do a title. I was sold in 2015. I had done my title, and I had my title. But the lawyers will tell you he has locals. So in a, to cut a long story short, mm. I've had to share, split my land into two because <laughs> I don't want to wake up and get to Accra at 8.30 to go to the land court so that the judge will call me and listen to the case for three minutes and I join it. <laughs> I, 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 did, I did mention at the beginning that this topic is something on which everybody here can speak and that's why so many people are connecting with Saka's testimony because it's happened to many of us, isn't it? So many people have had this experience but you see you, 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 um, you remember the point um, I'm sorry, can I call you round? <laughs> okay. Remember the point round made about no need to own land? At the point when you had the cutlass over your head, you, you agreed with him at that point, right? That there's actually was, no need. I was humbled because I realized that without land, I'll still eat. <laughs> <laughs> That's his point. That's his point. Um, there, there's an angle that I'd like the panelists to um, consider, and that is land for development. As we all know, um, we are a country that is still agrarian and we are banking a develop developmental trajectory on developing agriculture and then building on from there. Um, when it comes to land for agriculture, you mentioned that the government holds 20% and um, the landowners own 80%. Some have posited that that is the reason why commercial agriculture, you know, large-scale commercial, mechanized commercial agriculture has not developed in Ghana successfully as it has in Ivory Coast because there are so many different people who um, own the land. Um, lawyer Osebonsu also said that survival of the fittest means survival of the richest, the healthiest, the connected, and all of that. How are we going to develop agriculture and based on that be able to have accelerated development as, as, a, as a country if we have all these um, impediments um, in our way. Can anybody respond to that, please? Um, I, as I said earlier, um, the, planning, the special planning authority within the various metro, municipal, and district assemblies have the power to plan. The schools have the power to grant lands, leases, licenses, use rights, whatever. <laughs> so the disconnect is the schools do their own thing, the land owning uh, families do their own thing, and then the government does its own thing as and when. So if we are able to get the two of them sitting down, have a cost sharing kind of arrangement whereby the spatial planning authorities will plan the land for them, have the, uh, with a cost-sharing arrangement, then you can have certain lands. They'll use the schemes prepared by the spatial planners as their own scheme. So they won't do something different. They won't prepare a separate uh, uh, layout. And with that, areas reserved for agriculture can then uh, uh, be left for that. Mm -hmm. And especially there's some um, education on it as to 
how, I mean, the, the viability of having large tracts of land for commercial activities, they will be uh, amenable, I believe, to leaving <laughs> lands for, for such ventures. Because now the bottom line is money. That sounds complicated. <laughs> sounds complicated. Would you like to? Complicated. Okay. I've come to realize that land, no matter where it is, is complicated. Um, for, for our Greek, as you mentioned, lately we've been trying to go into farming. And we realize that there's a lot of land. Most of us who have the money to do the farms, we are in Accra. So we find it difficult going to the Afram Plains, going to Sefi, and going to um, um, Atebu area. There's a lot of land there. If you want to farm, you'll get some. My challenge with um, land in general is that our registration processes and the type of registration we do here is poor. Everything is manual. Everything is by paper. In 2017, if that is how we want to operate as a country, we won't go far. I visited Uganda recently. By a text message, I can know the owner of this land. Mm. What did they do? They shut down their land title registration for three months and digitized all the information they had. So from a computer, you're able to tell who owns this land as of today. Until we do such a thing, I don't know if you've tried to buy a property and you had to do a search at land's title. Mm -hmm. An official search today takes minimum one month. That one is even with someone following it for you. So if you don't have someone to follow it, I have a search that I started, I paid on 2nd January. It came out wow. this week. Hmm. Like what you said, there is land. Land for farming is not, not a problem. Um, but the thing is, when you want to do large-scale farming, large-scale farming needs money. And everybody needs to raise the capital for this large-scale farming. The first ingredient for large-scale farming is you must have the necessary paperwork for you to access funds. You must be able to go to the banks. The lands in the villages, as, as he has said, don't have any paperwork. Mm. And so you must find a way of registering these lands because every investor needs the documentation to be able to access funds. And also, um, I mean, I sit here and I, I'm a chief, so I can tell you that if, if you do what, what you have to do, but the chief will find you like If you do what you have to do, they will find you the land. It is available. They need people to come and farm on these lands. But large-scale farmers really need documentation, they need the appropriate paperwork. But I thought that was the point of the land administration project. Well, I think Mr. Wack can answer that. <laughs> I mean... I thought the land know, administration, unless I'm you know, wrong, I, but I thought the land administration you, you project was supposed to resolve... That. I did. He been, he I did. Somewhere, I like that. He was somewhere that they shut it down for three months. Mm -hmm. Our lap... Yes, has, has been, been going, going on for a decade yes. plus. Yes, yes. A decade plus, and we are nowhere mm -hmm. near digitizing the land re registry. But I think that <laughs> my, my, my Madam Sowa can. We have spent millions of dollars on this lab. Mm -hmm. yeah. Millions of dollars. And as of today, it's not digitized. Madam, it's been yeah. all put in V8. Mitsubishi pickups. It's okay, it's okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Madam, can you tell us why LAP hasn't, over a decade, taken us to a point where people can find details of land by text message? Can you tell us why we are not there yet? The people running LAP 
are Ghanaians. Yes, we, there's, there's a need for a paradigm shift, attitudinal shift. Hmm. Everybody wants to be a king or queen in his fiefdom. So even though um, Lap is trying to uh, uh, come out to the one-stop shop, as they call it, where you have a, a public invested lands management division, uh, surveying and mapping division, land valuation division, and land title, land registry division mm -hmm. under one umbrella. So when you drop your uh, indenture, it goes round, and at the end of the month, that is, if they give you a month, when you pick it up, you have your land title certificate. Mm -hmm. It's not happening because everybody is protecting their turf. They feel that you are usurping my right and nothing moves. Okay. So that, that is the main bane of... What would you suggest as a solution to that problem? Scrap the land administration project altogether? Yes. Please, just a minute. Why this obsession with land ownership? I mean, about 100% of efficient development in this country has been undertaken by the state, okay? And we have benefited from that development without struggling to own that development. Now, if development is inclusive, really, you, you really have no problem trying to struggle over that institutional deficiency. Now, because development is not inclusive, then individually, you want to be able to have ownership to be able to cater for yourself. And that's where the problem starts. Okay. But really, all our industrialists, all the orderly development that you see within Accra is within state land, okay? Right, okay. And so, um, once the development can spread to everyone, you will actually minimize the rush to try and own land and go through this cumbersome process, okay. you know, to achieve what we want to achieve. Right. Right. And let me just make my point that, um, I'm not too worried about agricultural land, but I'm more worried about the urban poor because of their exclusiveness, you know. And for me, that is the danger because when people get pushed, you know, that is when they tend to want to fight and that is where survival of the, the fittest, fittest comes yeah. to play. Yeah. Your Lordship. There was an idea that if you go around the country, you might find there is a lot of land. But the amount of money which you have to pay to buy that land before even you set out your project is horrendous. So we suggested that the government should think of land banks. The government will buy the lands, hold them in trust for the people who are ready and willing to develop those lands according to a program they have given to the government. Um, we were working on this and we got into some snack because uh, some indigenous people didn't want the idea that governments would come and buy the land. Mm. They rather would want to deal with uh, private individuals and you can tell why. <laughs> but if that idea is pursued and can be realized then the issue of scarcity of land for farming would probably have been solved. Okay. And I will urge um, my friends who are close, this, this gentleman, <laughs> Uncle Premu people. Right. Um, at this point, we would open up the discussion to the audience. Please remember, um, this is not uh, a law court. I know that there are lots of legal luminaries here. We can't solve your land problems here tonight. So please, make your questions less about yourself, more about the topic in general, and please keep the questions short. Thank you. Yes, please. All land in Ghana has been mapped out regarding agriculture. And there's a lot of land you cannot use for anything, certain kinds of things. There's some land that you can't use for crops at all. So if you want to do something agriculture, then you would have to go to either the Irrigation Authority or Ministry of Agri. 
But a lot of the time, what we are doing is we are building on things that are supposed to be used for our great. And looking ahead, it's, it will get to a time that we would have no food in this country because our great land is slowly going. We, we like to live, but we forget. Excuse me. Question, please. Question. The question. No, I'm saying that I have a, a, a contribution. Oh, okay. All right. I'm saying about our great, and I'm saying that oh, okay. I wanted to make a little contribution. Okay. On that All right. And in addition to that, we also have what we call water catchment areas. And water is supposed to flow in certain, certain things are supposed to contribute water to our rivers. We are building in those areas also. But those are the issues. And I think we must ask ourselves, um, the speaker said land belongs to families and families are, you're supposed to go to the families. But Everybody belongs to a family or a clan in this country. And people move out to different kinds of places. So if I come to Accra and I'm going to buy from somewhere, I come from another part of the country that can also give out land. Now we must ask ourselves, those who buy the land, do they pay taxes? How does the state ensure that those who sell the land use it to the benefit of the people? Now, whose land is supposed to contribute to agriculture or to the catchment area of the river? How does, how does he benefit? And the person who is selling the land and putting the man, money into his pocket, how is the person whose land is supposed to help all of us in, with our rivers and things going to build things? Thank so you. So I think as a state, we must really look at our systems, and that's what's creating the problem. The problem we are facing is because of wrong systems, and the country, I think, is very dysfunctional. We have to do something about it. Thank you. OAA 1982, I'm a barrister by profession. I have practiced law for 25 years in the United Kingdom. Please remember the guidelines. Keep it short. Thank you. My, my, my point is this. The system in Ghana seems to be failing Ghanaians. My mother died as a result of an accident fighting a land case last year. She had been to court no less than 20 times, and the case had been adjourned over and over again. If the judges in this country are not going to deliver judgment and justice to the people of this country, then they are failing. The Bible says, oh, that, that King David, it says that King David executed judgment and justice for all of his people. If judgment and justice isn't flowing from the top, this problem will continue. My Lord, I would invite you and your brethren to take seriously what the Bible says about judgment and justice. Thank you. And ensure Thank you very much. that the people of this land receive judgment and justice. Justice delayed. Thank you. Is justice Thank you. denied. Thank you. You said the government should create land banks so that our agriculture can be like expanded. Why don't we juxtapose um, real estate and buildings to that? Like Mr. Um, Osai Kwame said, no one really needs to own land. Why doesn't the government take the land, sell it to real estate developers, build, like we go on a long-term development project where we reclaim land from the sea because land does not end where land ends. The sea can be used for us. Like we can get land from it because other countries are doing it. The United Arab Emirates is doing it. We are developing. Why don't we follow their footsteps? And these chiefs who are creating multiple sales, they, they'll save some of the land for them. Like how the Red Indians in America, like <laughs> red culture Indian. is being protected. Shh. Yes, we could actually preserve our indigenous culture and then we develop the lands and then we give royalties to the chiefs so that there's no trouble when it comes to land ownership and there are no multiple sales. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really brilliant ideas there. <laughs> Madam Chairperson, my name is 
My name is Nana Asante. <coughs> Just to volunteer some information, within the past year, the <coughs> land administration, uh, the lab project, the last project has made considerable progress. There is now a land bill which has been drawn up by a whole group of uh, external experts invited by the Ministry of uh, Lands. <clears throat> and it's doing much better. The, 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 the bill is now going to cabinet. It will soon be before parliament. I agree with you that it's taken a long time, but they took a new initiative by inviting some uh, senior citizens as experts, and now there's considerable progress. I just wanted to bring this to your attention. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to I, I agree with my learned young friend, but I would suggest that if we don't uh, change laws, like iniquitous uh, laws, which give rise to uh, guards, what do you call them, land guards, uh, we shall never know peace on land cases in this country. And would I suggest to my learned friends that uh, land cases in this country are primarily caused by uh, perjury and uh, bribery and corruption <laughs> in all spheres of the administration of land. And even with a new law, which is being uh, which is being tabled, the law will not improve matters until we put a stop to bribery and corruption in high places and perjury. A leader law said that if the law was applied properly, half the people who go to court in Ghana would should end up in jail. Thank you. Thank you. that when your land has been fraudulently acquired and built on by somebody, that you can obtain an order to demolish that property or to, to warn the person to remove his property from your land and for the person to be marked with the cost of the removal of the structure. And wouldn't you recommend that as an order to be made by any judge in this land where somebody has fraudulently built on other Another person's land. land. Wouldn't you recommend that as an, an order that ought to be made under such circumstances? All right, thank you. We'll take two more questions and then we'll come to the panel. Hello. Two questions, was one here, okay. Hello, my name is Johannes Ofori. Um, okay, I have a question for the audience. How many of us have heard over 50 cases of demolition? No. Where you've heard demolition going on? Over 50 of them, how many of you have heard about that? Few. Okay, now how many of you have heard over 50 cases of land guards or fighting or so on? Okay, a lot more hands. And um, my point is, I think Achimota has a great opportunity to set a good example for Ghana. <laughs> it's not a question, it's a charge I'm giving Achimota. This program, Achimota Speak, you have the opportunity to set a good example that if you build on a place that is not right, you don't say, okay, fine, pay twice or pay three times. Serve as motivating for others. You clear the place and develop it for what it's supposed to be for. And we, we, we move on with that thing. Because, so I sell the land, then my children go and sell the land, so you pay twice. It's like you're encouraging a source of income. Thank you. We have to move the computer. So. Thank you. Yes. I think we're coming to the end of this meeting. So what I'm going to say is probably um, relevant after all that what you people have said has taken place. When we get the plot of land, we need to have it registered. And at the present time, 
registering land in Ghana is impossible. I'm sure there are lots of people here who have had the experience I've had. One little bit of land took five years <laughs> to be registered to give one document. One sheet of paper it was written by a company for, they, they took two years to write one sheet of paper. I mean, I can go on. What I'm trying to say is that when we've sorted out all these problems that we, we have about land, we have to register the land. And at the present time, the procedure, the process is impossible. You go there, they tell you, oh, your paper has got lost. I don't know whether they want you to do something before the paper gets found, but it does get found eventually. So I think whoever is responsible, we have to get our house in order in order to produce our, the documents for the land. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Would the panelists like to respond to some of the issues raised? Um, I do agree that when the court gives an order mm -hmm. for you to recover your house, mm -hmm. you should be able to go and demolish that house. But it is not as easy as it looks. <laughs> uh, I, there's a case, Faitoraika. Right. right. Now, Faitoraika had, I think, 60 acres of land or thereabouts. They built a factory on maybe 10 and a half acres. The 50 acres have been encroached on. So you have 50 acres of land that has been encroached on. This is easily... Um, 200 houses. 200 houses, almost. Mm. But judgment has been given to fight the right car. And one of them was recovery of possession. So wow. you can go and recover your 50 acres of land. Now, with all due respect, I don't think that any of you here would have, I mean, can go and demolish 200 homes. Hmm. I think that you can. <laughs> I, th I think some people can. <laughs> I know. Nice, 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 nice. <laughs> I think if you give some so, people the opportunity, they so, just might. Yes, yeah, so no. So, so then, <laughs> what I'm saying, that it is a case by case situation. It's a case by case situation. If it is one house, if it is one house, that is different. Now why do I say that is different? Now when you build on Achimota school land, no. you have noticed that that is Achimota school land. Yes, mm -hmm. school farm. Because you are building in the school. So you have, no, you see when you have ample notice, then mm. when the land is being recovered from you, it is not as simple as when the land really is a lion bear and, and then you were probably did not have the notice. So I'm saying that we should look at it, but it is a case by case. Yeah, I just want to add to what he has said. In fact, in the Achimota School land case, what the judge had done is having given Achimota School judgment, had called on counsel on the other side to say, look, the reliefs they are asking for will include recovery of possession. It will include damages. Now, those two things come around with some suggestion so that we may be able to do justice not only among the participants in court, but to the nation. In other words, if the two families and their tenants, or whatever they call them, agree that, well, okay, at Mother School, have those houses without any precondition. Then, at Mother School may decide that, okay, we'll make them into some sort of uh, university outlet or hmm. dormitories or something. Hmm. Hmm. But you see, if you have a straightforward claim that you want recovery of possession and you are given recovery of possession, you don't have the same option to say, now nah, I'm keeping the houses. 
So I think the judge was right when he suggested that the party should go back in view of the magnitude of the work and the fact that it's an Achimoto school, the fact that the people who sacrificed to fight this case right to the end did not have any personal interest in the properties they are trying to recover, except, as it were, for the national good. So he's giving them time. I think the 21st or something of this month will be the last time they should submit submissions. If they don't, then the option is really difficult. You can't go and recover your land unless you just decide that, okay, I will not pull down the houses. I will use the houses as part of my claim for my land. Yes. But then you have to go back to the court with those proposals. Thank you. I'd like to talk about um, Accra KB Asante's um, corruption and bribery statement. In my young experience, I've realized that a lot of our leaders and people at the top are corrupt, and they are the main reason why we are here today. <laughs> This goes both well, for the NPP and the NPC. The because all the houses after are today, they are the soon they will come after me. But if someone doesn't else. say it, I don't know how we'll survive. How come most of these people have yeah, schooled abroad? They've do. walked through parks. They've seen it green areas that are reserved. But unfortunately, in our country, which whatever green area was left in the cantonments, the rages, have all been taken up by politicians. Go and check and you'll find out that it's politicians that took the land and have built on them. As I sit with you today, the Archimota Forest Preserve is being registered, and you can go and find out, by politicians. We can't make any progress if we keep on like this. How can Ghana develop if people who have power, the people who in charge, are so greedy that they want to take everything for themselves? Why is Accra um, Children's Park, the, the Accra Park by Richard, why is it as it is? Because they want it to run down so that someone will have an excuse to take it and develop it into expensive real estate. And so our leadership is called to order. In my opinion, and I state it again, until we shut down our land title registration system or our whole registration system, digitize it and have a good overhaul, we won't make any progress. Another 10 years, when Achimota is 100, we will <laughs> sit here and we will talk like we are talking today. We, 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 we certainly hope that when Achimota is 100, all the issues we've touched, when Achimota is 100, we hope that we'll come back and say that these events that we held made a difference, changed the game, changed the story. Thank you. Any more questions? Yes, please. Please, I wanted to know how best we can curb land disputes since all the other means are failing us, especially the law courts. It's all failing us now, so how best can we curb it? Thank you. This is the most important question so far. So all the panelists will have to respond to this. Please think about your answers. My name is The thing is that when you don't have one point where all land issues are taken care of, all right? So, town planning is planning, survey is surveying, land is registering by house. So, number one. Number two, uh, uh, boss, I totally agree with your opposition, but please add cheese. <laughs>
technology work? Okay, we have laws. So what's up? Ghana is very good at making laws, but we don't enforce it. Thank you. Thank you. Two more questions, and then we are, we'll be wrapping up. Yes, please. My name is NST Abwa. I have a very simple question for the panelists. Can you really buy land in this country? <laughs> is there a market for land? Because there's a big difference between tenure and who has usufructory rights and whether you buy the land. The reason I ask is, uh, Osei Kwame Ajimai mentioned that you really don't need land and therefore it is not a factor of production in this regard. The second was Saka mentioned that in East Africa and Uganda, they shut down their land registry for three months. There's a reason why they could do that. Colonial policy historically in East Africa mm -hmm. was quite different from West Africa. They have a land market. We really don't have a land market. So I'd like that differentiation. You really buy land or you lease land and you have title to land. Thank, Thank you. you. Who takes the last question? No, you've had a chance. Anyone else who hasn't spoken? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> um, my question is simple. Uh, what do we do now? Before I came here this evening, I thought we had a land problem. But after listening to all that has been said, I think we have a moral problem, not a land problem. And the honorable judge said, when he was a young man, we were 8 million. Today we are several times that number. What are we going to do to grant peace to the generations that will come after us? I think until we tell the people the truth, they will create the own. Thank you. Thank you very much. Will the panel, well, I said that was the last question. Start here. Pardon me. Go ahead. Please. Okay, I'll take the question about the different agencies. Okay. Um, the essence of the one-stop shop was to um, stop uh, people going from um, division or institution to institution. So the essence was that uh, you drop your indenture at uh, the client services unit within uh, PVLMD, that is the Public Investor Lands Management Division. You drop it there. Thereafter, you're supposed to be given a slip. Once they check and everything's okay, and then they'll say, maybe come in three months' time. There's three months really means that within the system, it will go from spatial planning. So it will be taken to the spatial planning <laughs> department. I just can't call <laughs> <laughs> uh, is, is the change in name only? The change in name? Well, I... <laughs> and all that. So at the end of the three months, the date you're given to come, right, you're supposed to have your title certificate. Does it provided work? it is a land title registrable area. Mm. So far, the only registration, uh, registrable areas for land title is Greater Accra, that is Accra Tema, parts of Ashanti, and they are running pilots at uh, Winneba and Savalugu. The rest, the deed system still continues. But even in these areas, is this working? This fine it's system, not working. It, can we ask, is it working? Has it worked for anybody here? Okay, we are rounding up. So, digitization is the key. I'm rounding up. Like uh, my, um, my fellow panelists said, right, there is the need for digitization. We are still in the manual age. And that is not all going hmm. well for all of us, including right. the, okay. uh, uh, right. uh, the various departments okay. under okay. the Lands Commission. So there's the, the need, an urgent need to quickly, urgent need to quickly digitize all our records. That's one. Then um, somebody was talking about uh, land suitability, uh, using wetlands, I think. That is what I alluded to earlier, that 
the land owning uh, uh, the land owning groups are the uh, they grant uh, their lands, yet planning is done by the spatial planning department of the various metros, <coughs> municipal, and district assemblies. So there's a disconnect. They want their money like yesterday. So anything they see within their uh, uh, stool area, mm -hmm. family area, clan area, skin area is good to go. Okay. So till we get the two of them talking, because spatial planning wants money to be able to give their planning scheme. They will say they don't have the money because the people come in trickles. Mm -hmm. So they must find a way of cost sharing to mm. be able to get the schemes from the planners to then grant. That, that way, they will follow the scheme that has been uh, properly planned. Right, thank you. Yes? Um, okay. I think we are, we, are, we are refusing to recognize the fact that we are still in the process of nation building. In the process of? Nation building. Oh, okay. Um, we failed in several systems. And um, we are still in the process of ar arriving at a civilized nation. Mm. Now, almost everyone in this room has a problem. But the problem is with ourselves in this room. And we think that the issue is external to us because every time we keep blaming what is beyond this room and we think everybody in this room is sacrosanct. But it's the citizens of this country who have contributed to making the situation what it is. And it is interesting how someone refers to her chief, forgetting that that chief represents her, but she thinks that the chief is so removed that he's capable of acting on his own without her. And without your inclusiveness, you obviously do that. And so you need to recognize that we've all failed as citizens. We haven't grown this country to the point where we should benefit from the kind of systems that we want. And we all talk about what is optimum and what is good and efficient. But we contribute to making sure that it doesn't work. Right. Thank you. Lisa. Okay. Um, to round up, in my young opinion, I think that um, the government of the day should focus. You see, our land system requires focus, a lot of focus. There is no focus on lands commission. If there was focus on lands commission, land title registry, and land survey, we won't be here. They introduced the barcode system, this three months thing she's talking about. They introduced it about 18 months ago. Since they introduced it, selling a house is the most difficult thing, and Wagus here will admit. Before you buy a house, you want to do an official search. If you see my house today and you want to buy it, and the official search takes five weeks, if I come back, will your $100,000 be lying where it was lying five weeks ago? You would have found need for it, and you would not be able to buy, or you would have used the money for something else, and it's disturbing business seriously. It's disturbing lawyers, it's disturbing developers. <laughs> Land here is serious business, and the government stands a chance to make a lot of money from lands. How many of you here have indentures that are under your pillows mm. that you haven't bothered to register? Mm. Almost all of you. Imagine the money we are losing. If I take my, land, say, my indenture to lands, and it takes five years to register. What's my motivation to register the remainder of my lands? But if la the government focuses on paying the people at lands well, giving them targets, and seeing to it that the jobs are done, I'm sure that they will make more money and pay the people better than they are doing. I think we are losing a lot of money for, um, for our inefficiency and the poor way in which we manage our registration system. Digitizing is the way forward. Until that is done, if you have to go and look through 50 files to find my file to write my search report, we will need at least a month to do that. And that is a loss to the state. Thank you. Um, let me end by saying, uh, I think that a young girl asked. Sorry? Hello. Kathleen. Yes. 
I think that the young girl asked. Yes, a very important question Which about was, solutions, considering that all systems have failed or are failing. No, but that is not right. Okay. <laughs> Please give her some hope. We, we shouldn't lose hope. Oh, isn't true? <laughs> I think that um, what, what is important now is that the government has realized that if it doesn't put its land registration systems in place, this country is going nowhere. Chaos. Um, so I know for a fact that very soon, I don't know how soon, we are going to have a digitized land administration. It's you heard it here. A pipeline. No, but you shouldn't plans look. Are this far this far is far the far advisor far. to the Minister of uh, Lands and advanced. Mineral Resources. <laughs> they are far advanced. Oh, it's in the pipeline. <laughs> that we are working as a USA <laughs> to ensure that that is in place. Now, for me, that is the beginning of the solution mm -hmm. of this problem of survival of the fittest. Right. Once we have the digitized land administration system in place, mm -hmm. land ownership will be clear. Right. It will be clear and it will reduce the strife by 80, 90%. Mm -hmm. So let us all channel our efforts and pray <laughs> and back the government in this endeavor to digitize the land administration system. And it will happen, but I don't want the young ones to lose hope in the judicial system. Mm -hmm. There is a saying in tree. It is a slightly crooked. It is not broken. <laughs> <laughs> it is slightly crooked. It is not broken. I know that my Lord and other judges recognize the need to streamline the land course. And that is why we have now specialized land courts right. to ensure that justice is delivered. So let us have hope. All right. We will get there. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Your Honor, would you like to say something before we... we well, I, I just wanted to say that <clears throat> it's not very easy taking the culture of this nation to turn upside down a system we are used to. When the government thought that the registration of deeds was important. They did it. But then it was found out that it was a hollow system. So now they say that was not good. We'll now do land title registration. The difference was that in the land title registration, you vet the information in the document you are certifying before you give a certificate. In the land registry system, the indenture you get from some typewriter gentleman sitting in front of commercial bank in High Street, they sign and then they go and register it. And therefore, it's a document. It has been registered and therefore, you should work with it. It contains virtually nothing. Sometimes you sit in your office and somebody comes, oh, this thing, do you have a document on it? You say, yes, tomorrow I'll bring. He brings the thing to you and you immediately ask you. Who prepared this document for you? So, oh, like, why? Is, is there something wrong? I said, yeah, there, there's no comma here. <laughs> 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 yeah, because the whole thing is so bad, and yet he thinks he has got a document, and he's gone and registered it. Mm. And for that type of deed registration, you don't need to check the details. Just take the land paper there and do it. Now they say, we do land title. And I am the first to admit that it takes too long to verify the information in the land title. When I was on that board, I asked the gentleman in the land administration, I think he was um, the secretary to the lands commission or something. He said, look, Dr. Chum, you and I, we can sit here and talk good language, but take the same problem to the villages and try and translate our fears and our aspirations to them. They have no idea what we are talking about. They say, oh, sell Brunini, I'm in the air. That's it. So it is going to take us a long while to get it. But I don't believe that we can shut up the whole place for three months and get digitization. Mm -hmm. I was in Botswana for some time, as been told. And they were having doubts about the beers 
all their diamonds were being taken to Holland. So they decided that they would think about doing it in Botswana. They had, they had a meeting, they had big people, they came in, and they did it. And they told the beers, if you want the diamonds, they are here in Botswana, come to our country. Otherwise, there will be no diamonds coming from this country to them. Now they go there. And the young men have been trained how to cut diamonds in Gabroni. So I think there is a need for us to improve. But sometimes we must learn to walk first after crawling. We finished crawling, man. <laughs> because you see, this digitization, you go to the place where they are uh, renewing licenses. I'm not giving you a big deal. Just go to renew your driving license and see the sort of rush and the sort of pandemonium in that place. <laughs> Just a driving license. It's because they are doing it in one place. If it was decentralized, we wouldn't have any problem. The system can be centralized. <coughs> it's just printing like they print your ID card. And you can put your biometric details on it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.